Today we're going to compare the Nuna Mix Next and the Upper Baby Cruise V2, two reversible seat mid-size strollers from premium manufacturers that I often find compete to fulfill the same urban use niche. So let's jump straight into it then, looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each model in turn, and focusing on their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity and driving characteristics, before ending with a discussion of under what conditions and uses one might make a better purchase over the other. And starting off with the mix next, the model clocks in at roughly 13 kilos and folds down to 76 by 60 by 42 centimeters, with the seat attached. It can carry 22 kilos in the seat, and a little under 5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. As far as child comfort is concerned, on the positive side, the Mix Next seat is highly adjustable, with both a full flat, newborn acceptable recline, and a good vertical upright position, and it has a large mesh window behind the seat liner that provides added ventilation in warmer climates. Unfortunately, however, these couple of positives are ruined by a weak canopy prone to falling open while driving, with uncoverable ventilation panels in the extension section, a short, sagging leg rest, and some of the smallest seat dimensions on the market, with an inside width of only 28 centimeters and a length of only 78, almost ensuring insufficient seat space for a lot of children by the age of two, and making leg support an issue with the seat reversed past this time. When it comes to parent comfort, the Mix Next handle is adjustable between 105 and 114 centimeters, and the shopping basket is large and decently accessible, despite its somewhat low weight capacity for a model of this sort. Folding the Mix Next is easy, with the model dropping down as a single piece, with the seat facing either forwards or reversed. Though, I would note here that it doesn't fold down directly to a standing position, which makes for more bending when packing it in and out of the trunk. As far as how the model feels to use, the Mix Next is bendier than most other strollers out there, a result of the model's somewhat weak central support struts and very malleable suspension, and the handle's also a bit loose right out of the box, all of which are factors that make the Mix Next somewhat weak and unstable feeling in my opinion. In terms of longevity, the Mix Next tends to loosen up quite a bit over time. But that being said, the design of its mechanisms are generally simple, and most of the key wear areas, such as the front and rear frames, are properly reinforced, which helps to prevent more serious issues. Driving-wise, the model has larger front wheels than a lot of comparable strollers of its sort, and with that soft but substantial suspension, it provides good shock absorption in off-road conditions. Though, it's also a little heavy to steer in my opinion, since the model tends to bend quite a bit before changing direction. Alright, moving on, the Upper Baby Cruise V2 is a bit lighter than the Mix Next, at 11.5 kilos, and folds down to a skinnier, though longer, 42 by 58 by 84 centimeters. It can take the same 22 kilos in the seat, but at 14 kilos, has nearly three times the weight capacity in its underslung shopping basket. Looking at child comfort, the Cruise V2 seat has a fixed frame bucket design, with a decent upright position and a full recline as well, but can't provide that same newborn acceptable full flat setup that the Mix Next can without the use of a seat insert. Size-wise, the Cruise V2's seat is significantly larger than the Mix Next's, with 34cm width and 109cm length, just when using the leg rest, which then both keep seat space comfortable all the way up to 3.5 or 4, and also provides leg support in the reversed position much longer than with the Mix Next. And on top of this, the Cruise V2's canopy is also longer, sturdier, and all of its ventilation panels are coverable with flaps. When it comes to parent comfort, the Cruise V2 has a somewhat lower range of handle height, between 101 and 108 centimeters, while the shopping basket is even more accessible than the Mix Next in the way it extends off the rear frame, and, as I already said, is more weight capable. As far as folding is concerned, despite being a little taller, the Cruise V2 folds down to a natural standing position, which means less bending when picking it up, though I would note that the model unfortunately doesn't fold as a single piece with the seat reversed, only when forwards facing. When it comes to how the Cruise V2 feels to use, it's significantly more rigid and stable feeling, with a tighter handle and less looseness overall, and longevity-wise, it can take a lot more punishment without risk of wear, though I would point out that both the brake system and the swivel locks are more complex internally than with the Mix Next, and require a certain amount of lubrication to keep them working smoothly. Lastly, when it comes to driving, the Cruise V2 has a different suspension setup than the Mix Next, 
large, hefty spring-loaded struts. They give a pleasant, very noticeable bounce when powering over obstacles, but are, at the same time, not quite as shock-absorbing over continuously bumpy ground, such as rougher cobblestones. And with the Cruise V2 also having slightly smaller wheels, it's a bit less capable when off-roading, though still decent for stuff like dirt roads, city parks, gravel, and lighter cobblestones. And its rigid structure also makes it more comfortable to steer and tip, in my opinion. So which of these models do I recommend then? Overall, I consider the Cruise V2 to be the better purchase, as even though the Mixed Next does have a few upsides, better off-road capability, a full flat recline for the newborn period, and the ability to fold as a single piece with the seat reversed, the Cruise V2's positives are more significant when looking at your stroller use as a whole, with its much larger seat, more weight-capable shopping basket, lighter weight, standing fold, and much more solid feel. And on top of these factors, I'd also add that its base cost is 100 bucks less, and also that Up a Baby has shown themselves to be better than Nuna when it comes to after sales service, spare parts, and help with repairs. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.